Hey, welcome back. So today we are going to um, go ahead and make glass inside of Unreal Engine. And you can kind of see that in the uh, picture right here behind me. Sorry, wrong side. Right here, that little glass orb. We're going to make something like that. We're going to make a material inside of Unreal Engine. This should be real quick and simple and something that you can uh, add to get the, all of the uh, reflectiveness and uh, transparency that you see here. So let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, so here's a basic desert scene, similar to what you just saw. And what we're going to do is first we're gonna make our material, okay? And I already have a folder down here where I put my material. I have mega scans, that's where all the mega scan materials go, but we're gonna create this one manually. So you may wanna create a folder. If you just right click, hit new folder, it'll create a folder and then rename it material. Probably materials would be a good thing to call it because there's be more than one in there, I would hope. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and open it. Right now it's empty. I'm gonna right click on the uh, empty area down there and we're gonna select materials right here, material, okay? And we're gonna name this M underscore, and I'll just call this glass. If you're gonna make glass windows or glass for different things, you can make obviously different materials for those things and you can kind of play around. Uh, once we make the initial material and then an instance, you can make additional instances and adjust the instances to be different things and you can rename them. So let's go ahead and we'll just go ahead and hit enter. Double click on that material. We're gonna open it up right here. This is your basic material stack. We're going to make a couple changes over here in the details. Okay, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go from opaque to translucent right here under material. Okay, so material translucent. You can see that we lose some of the uh, things that we're gonna need actually here in our uh, material stack. So I'm going to scroll down next to uh, Translucency right here under the detail section. So you just use your mouse button and scroll button and scroll down. And right here under lighting mode, we're going to change from where it is right now is vault, wall metric, uh, volumetric non-directional. We want surface translucency volume. So the second one from the bottom. Okay. And when we do that, we gain some of these controls back in our stack here. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to add a bunch of const, uh, constants so that we can uh, adjust these. And then we're gonna add um, a LERP, which is a, a, a linear interpolation, and we're also gonna add, add a Fresnel. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on that. I'm gonna right click right here, I'm gonna type in CON, and that'll pull up my const. I just want to go ahead and select that. Okay, I got one of these. I'm gonna need six of these total. So with it selected, I'm gonna hit Control, put my mouse down here, hit Control W, Control W, do it again until we get six of these. And I need one more. All right. So they can just be randomly placed in here. We'll adjust them as we go along. So this first one at the very top, I'm going to select it again. And I'm going to connect it into my base color and my base metallic right there. And I didn't change the number yet because I wanted to talk a little bit about this. What we're doing is we're going to adjust the way that the uh, material behaves. And uh, because we want it to uh, kind of have a white color, uh, this will work, okay? So right here, if I, um, and I also want it to have a metallic behavior. So right now it's flat with a zero, and you can kind of see that this is behaving flat and it's black. So zero is black, one will be white, and then if you use decimals in between, that's going to create various shades of gray in between. So down here in the value, if I place one in there, it's going to work out for me that one will give me a high sheen, like a, meta uh, like a metal, and it'll also give me a base color. Now, if you wanted to change it so that your base color was something different but still wanted it really metallic, you would have to have two different consts right here. Okay, So you have to have one for the base color and one for the metallic. I'm using this one for both uh, just because it works out for the, the way the window is going to look for me. Okay, for my specular, I'm going to go ahead and select this one right here. And I'm going to connect it to specular. And down here in the value, I'm going to put 0.5. This is something you can play around with as well. And since we want to make it easy to play around with, we're going to convert this to a parameter. So I'm going to right click on this node, on this little const node, right here, convert to parameter. And I'm just going to name it what it is. This is specular. All right. And we could have actually just pulled up parameters, but because we're going to be playing around with these a little bit, it's just easier to start with a const. For roughness, 
we don't want to have any roughness in it. So if I leave it at zero, it's going to really make this reflective. You can see how now it's changed from kind of having that uh, kind of a bumpy, uh, rough surface to now being really highly reflective. So we're going to leave this at zero. But again, if you wanted to change the way your glass behaves, so maybe you wanted to make it sort of like a broken crystal or uh, like some really kind of sanded uh, behavior glass, then you may want to change this. So let's go ahead and right click on this. We're going to convert this to a parameter and we're going to call this roughness. These inputs will change the way that your glass will behave in the scene. And then the last thing we're going to do is take this right here. We're going to connect it to opacity. And with it being zero, you can see it completely disappears. Down here for the value, I'm going to put this at 0.5 so that it comes back a little bit. And again, knowing that you may want to play around with the way that the, um, how see-through this surface area is, we're going to also make this a parameter. We're going to convert that to parameter, and we're just going to name it what it is, opacity. Okay. There we go. So these two cons down here, okay, we're going to move them off the side just a little bit. And this top one is going to get a value of 1. And this one is going to get a value of 1.33. And we're going to also make this into a parameter. So we're going to convert it to parameter again. And we're going to call this IOR. Okay? And this is going to uh, affect the behavior of how the light refracts through the uh, glass. Okay? Now, what we need to do is we need to hook these into a LERP. So we're going to right click, we're going to type in LERP, and what we want to find is the one that says linear interpolation right there. All right? The 1 on top is going to go to A. The 133, the IOR, is going to go into B. And now we need a Fresnel. P F R E S. It should come up. Fresnel. There we go. This also is going to affect the way that the um, light is refracted, refracted through the um, glass as well. You can see we have the exponent and base reflective uh, fractal here, I believe that says. Yeah, fraction. All right. So this is going to go into our refraction right down here. Okay. So now our glass material is all set up. We're going to go ahead and save it. And I'm going to pop it into there real quick. And we can see that right down here in our materials folder, it now looks like our glass. I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to create a material instance out of this. Okay, I'm just going to hit enter and leave it that name. I'm going to double click on that. And you can see that all of those parameters that we created, the IOR, opacity, roughness, and specular, are all right here. And we can turn these on simply by putting the check mark in, and then we can adjust the way that it behaves over here. Save that real quick. All right, so now we need something to put our material instance onto. And this is going to just be something real simple. We're going to go to Place Actors, and I'm going to go to Basic. And I just want a simple sphere right here from our Basic. Just this little sphere right here. And over here where it says Materials, I'm going to grab my material instance and stick it right there. And now I have this piece of glass, but it's not really behaving the way I want it to yet. And that's because we also need to go into our volumes right here, and we need to give it, actually our visual effects, my bad, uh, into our visual effects, and what we need to do is we need to give it a uh, information for what it's going to reflect. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull this in here, and for some reason the visibility of that's not showing up. Let's see here. There we go. If I hit G on my keyboard, I turn it off. You can see that the reflective area is quite large. That's kind of this yellow line right around here, all the way around. It doesn't need to be that big since we're just working with our glass right here. So right here where it says influence radius, I'm going to pull this down quite a bit. It doesn't have to be right on top of it, but something, you know, something small enough to work with. So we're not affecting other surfaces if we don't want to. All right, so now, okay. Now you can see we've got our reflective surfaces 
behaving in the glass here. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. And let's uh, move around the other side so that sphere is not uh, kind of in our way. You can see that we have our reflectiveness here. So let's go ahead and take a real quick look at our material instance. I'm going to pull this tab back down so I can see my little controls here at the top and I can also see my glass. And we'll play around with some of these just for a second here to kind of show the behavior. So if I wanted to kind of give it a little bit more roughness, so it wasn't quite so reflective, kind of like a maybe sandblasted glass or a glass that has uh, some sort of a coating on it or kind of a pitted surface, we can kind of play around with the roughness a little bit. You can always hit this arrow and it's going to reset back to those defaults that we put into the uh, into the um, actual material itself. And then uh, our IOR, this is how things kind of affects the way things reflect in the surface area of our sphere here. And you can play around with these so you get the behavior that you want to have. Um, one of the things, like if you use this in a glass window, um, and you have it's a two-sided window, you can see both sides of it. You may get some weird, if you use 1.33, it may have some kind of a weird kind of a bending effect uh, so that it looks really weird when you look at it from the side. You may need to play around with it. I've found that cutting this down to one sort of uh, makes the window look and behave a little bit more like you might expect it to, but somewhere between one and 1.33. Of course, opacity, you know what this does. This will make it go from being glass to being a mirror. Okay. And actually, one is the max here for that. So between zero and one. All right, so that is uh, pretty much it for making glass, a reflective glass surface, and using the uh, reflective um, sphere here to help um, make it so that it actually reflects the way we want it to. All right, so that is it. Uh, just like I said, it's just a real quick little uh, demonstration on how to make a glass material that you can use for uh, your games inside of Unreal Engine. Uh, if you like what you saw, please uh, like this video and also um, go ahead and please subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel, putting on the Fritz 3D animation or 3D visualization rather. And uh, we'll all see you around in the next video. Take care.